What's up? I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, we're going to talk about weighted balls. So when should you start a weighted ball program, if at all? Are they safe? What are some of the pros and cons? And if you do choose to do one, when is going to be the right time for you? All right, so if you're new here, I'm Coach Dan. I'm a former pro pitcher and also a former baseball academy, uh, baseball and softball academy owner. So I've had skin in the game. I've done some weighted ball training myself in the past. I've also done weighted ball programs with my players in the past. And I've also done non-weighted ball programs, which are the predominance of our programs, um, because I really don't necessarily like the way weighted ball training is done. So here's the thing that I need to first explain before we get to the verdict, which I'll give you at the end, all my recommendations about what I would do with, with my son or niece or nephew or whoever, if they wanted to throw harder. Um, the first thing you have to understand is that weighted balls are not inherently dangerous. This is a football. It weighs, I think, like 17 ounces or something like that. Don't quote me on it. This is a weighted ball. This is a vortex ball, much heavier than a baseball. This is a weighted ball. Softball, this is a weighted ball. So look, if it was true that weighted balls in themselves were, you know, these demon things um, and that only five ounces was this pure, perfect uh, weight, then, you know, injuries would, would abound in all these other sports. Softball, not really the case. Football, not really the case. Um, really, the only people that are constantly injuring their arms are baseball pitchers. Yes, there are injuries for all positions in baseball, but it is a heavy concentration for pitchers. And we all know this. So it's not just throwing and it's not just throwing a heavier object. What really comes down to the risk involved with pitching a baseball at high speed and also weighted ball programs or any velocity program in general is how you do it and the intensity with which you're throwing these balls. So the big problem that I have here is that, you know, again, weighted balls are not inherently dangerous. It comes down to the way you do it. You could recreationally throw the football around all the time, all, you know, in your backyard year round and probably never suffer any ill effects. But people don't use weighted baseballs that same way. No one's ever going in the backyard and just tossing the, the eight ounce weighted ball around. That's just not a thing that happens. It could be, there's no reason you couldn't, um, but that's not the way they're used. So when people are talking about weighted balls for baseball, they're talking about velocity programs. So I wanna just make this distinction that today the point is, should you start a weighted ball velocity program? Is that a safe thing by different ages? or should you wait and focus on other things when you're younger? So the first thing that you need to know is that young players, and I'm saying young, I'll say like under 15, so middle school, elementary school, these kids should not be doing weighted ball programs. I'm just gonna put that out there. Um, and the reason being is you can't out-train your skeletal immaturity, you can't out-train not hitting puberty yet, you can't go in the weight room and try to, to, to gain five or 10 more miles per hour when you're only 12 and you're 86 pounds and you're skeletally immature. Really the bulk of safe gains happen when they're progressing slowly um, over age or when you hit this level of skeletal maturity in high school, once you're starting to go through puberty, your growth plates fuse, and then you have a lot less risk and you start to like really harden up and become more of a man and less of a little boy. So the question you have to ask yourself if you're a parent, you're looking at your 12 year old or your 13 year old or your 11 year old, and you're saying, all right, my son doesn't throw as hard as he wants to, should we do a weighted ball program? The question is, how much are you really gonna get out of this? And are you going to be able to outrun their lack of physical maturity? Really, a lot of these young kids, when they have like a big spurt of like velocity or whatever, they're just gonna sort of taper off later. You don't have continuous huge jumps in, whether it's strength, speed, size, any of it, over and over and over. You have a, a it all tends to sort of like even out to a relatively like, linear progression over time. You know, everyone gains a couple miles per hour every year. Uh, if everyone gains six, seven, eight miles per hour every year, everyone would throw in the hundreds, right? So the thing to understand is what can you control when a player is young? And you can control their love for throwing, their love for practice, their love for baseball, their mechanics, their development of off-speed pitches, their focus uh, on throwing strikes and commanding and this mind-body connection that's important to throwing strikes. All of those things, if you develop those when young, and there is limited brain power and focus and time, so you, it, is, it is sort of a zero-sum game sometimes. You can't just do everything. So a lot of times when you do focus so heavily on gaining velocity, it pushes brain power and practice time and focus out of hitting your spot and working on your changeup and all this other stuff. I see a lot of kids who are obsessed with their velocity and their parents are right there with them. And 
it's a bad thing because now all they know how to do is throw as hard as they can. They go out in a the game, they're checking the radar gun every half inning, and they're completely taken by their velocity. And if they don't throw 86 today, if they're only 84, they're really sad even, even if they pitch well. Um, and often these players don't become good pitchers because they're so taken mentally by velocity only. And velocity is just one aspect of pitching. Everyone at this point knows some player who throws 90 in high school who's only going to junior college or isn't really recruited that well at all because the kid can't throw strikes, right? And of course, throwing strikes is not that easy. So I don't want to make it that make a flippant statement that everyone should be able to throw strikes. It's not that, that easy. But there's more and more kids who have velocity who don't have anything else than ever. And I credit a lot of that to these velocity programs that are so pushing kids toward this mindset where velocity is the only thing I'm really concerned about and their sort of like personal identity gets wrapped up in it and it's not a real healthy thing. So you do not have to be velocity focused when you're young to have good velocity when you're older. That's one of the first things I want to let you know is that focusing on this now when you're 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 does not mean you're going to be a harder throw when you're older. In a lot of ways, the opposite is true because if you're focused on really hard training when they're young, a, they might burn out and say, I'm done with baseball. This feels like work. I hate this. Two, if they start to develop pain uh, or any kind of injuries, even small ones that don't require surgery, they might be like, you know what? Baseball hurts. Baseball is not particularly fun anymore, both because it does feel like a job and because my arm always bugs me. I just want to go play video games. So as a parent, it's not just should we try to get them more velocity? Because sure, who wouldn't want more velocity? But it's also a question of am I doing the right things when they're young? Am I building their passion for the game? Am I, am I building this fun, like, you know, they they love to go out and throw a football, throw a Nerf ball, throw a softball, throw a baseball, throw a tennis ball when they're young, so that when they're older and they do start to have a little bit of, you know, arm problems or practice gets tough or they're not playing that well on the field, they're still really motivated to go practice and put in the work to get better, to get that playing time that they want because they love the game so much. But weighted ball programs, and even strength training to an extent. I tell parent, parents this all the time, do not push your kids into strength training. Wait till they are begging you to do it and they're ready. All these things feel like a job. When I retired from baseball, I was so burned out from strength training and arm care and all this stuff that's like good, wholesome, healthy things to do to keep yourself on the field, but they suck. So if your kid's doing velocity program at 12, Velocity programs, like they can be fun and motivating, but is that the right thing for him? Or should he be spending more time being a kid, recreationally throwing, practicing baseball skills rather than specific velocity training, stuff like that? So again, just remember that focusing heavily on velocity when they're young does not automatically mean they will be harder throwers when they're older, and it could be the opposite. One thing I wanna mention about weighted ball training is that it's still relatively new, it's still relatively experimental. It really came into prominence just in the last 10 years. So a lot of the players that are doing it, it's still unclear if they're healthier because of weighted ball training or less healthy from weighted ball training. We do know that injuries, injury rates have gone up. They continue to not fall. Like we haven't figured anything out really to lower the, in, the you know, to reduce pitching injuries in general. We have reduced shoulder injuries significantly. So labrum surgeries, rotator cuff surgeries, those have both dropped tremendously because of uh, exercise like the thrower's 10, rotator cuff exercises, quote unquote, arm care. But the elbow, you know, the UCL, Tommy John surgery, I've had Tommy John twice. The elbow is a more passive structure. You can't strengthen your Tommy John ligament, your alter ulnar collateral ligament, but you can strengthen all the muscles in your shoulders. So shoulder injuries have really dropped off, which is wonderful. But elbow injuries, because again, it's a more passive structure that you can't directly train and make stronger, um, they have continued to rise. Think about all the things that you've, uh, you know, like humans have been ingesting. There's been a lot of food additives that took five, 10 years before you realized this thing is getting, giving a lot of people cancer. There are lots of things that it seems at first that there's no evidence that they're harmful. But just because there's no evidence that they're harmful doesn't mean that there is no harm. So no evidence of harm is not the same as no harm. So a lot of the stuff with the weighted balls, um, and I'm not saying that they're injuring everyone. It's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we still really don't know. And the problem is that there's so many confounding variables in the mix. You know, you do weighted ball training for eight weeks out of the year. Well, then you also throw, you know, 65 innings between high school and summer ball. And you also do strength training and you also play football for a couple of weeks in the fall. So if you injure your arm 
which is it? Was it the weighted ball training? Was it playing football in addition to two baseball seasons? Was it throwing 65 innings? Was it throwing 20% curveballs? We really don't know. It's so hard to pick this out. And this is why it's often really hard to, to find out what nutritional things are making people you know, sick or where is this carcinogen coming from? With the human body and all these sort of experiments that we run on it and testing new things out and trying new types of training, it becomes really difficult to figure out what is the essentially effective dose of something and when something goes wrong, which exact you know, thing is the culprit? So we know injury rates are climbing. We know weighted ball training and velocity training is you know, a very prevalent thing now. We don't really know exactly how those two are interacting. We really just don't. So as a parent, I would say, and this is what I would do if I had a son, I don't have any children. If I had a son, I would do exactly what I did with my kids in my academy um, and we did some weighted ball programs early on and we had some injuries. We had two injuries in over like four years, um, but that was too many for me. And I didn't like how that made me feel as a coach. Um, so we scrapped it. So we didn't do any weighted ball training um, after like my first two years in business. And so I said, I don't know what's going on. I think I did this really safely. Um, I think I did everything the right way, but I don't know. So we're going to focus on mechanics. We're going to focus on pitch quality. We're going to focus on developing great off-speed pitches. We're going to focus on command and a lot of the stuff that pitchers are going to need anyway. They're going to get that from me. If they want to get something else at a different facility, they can go do that. But that was what we focused on. And that's the same decision that I would implore you today to make, which is if your kids are below high school age, focus on pitch ability, off-speed pitches, command, love of the game, mechanics, all of that good stuff. And then when they're getting a little older, they're 15, 16, and it's like, hey, we, we, you know, you're throwing 75 at 16. If you want to play college baseball, if that's a desperate need for you, you're going to need to add five or 10 miles per hour more. So how can we start to really ramp up your training to maybe reach, reach that goal, knowing that it'll be a little bit riskier than maybe some other things you could do? So that's an informed decision you could make later. But I don't think the benefits of doing really intense velocity training when you're young I don't think that's going to have the long-term benefits that you want because, again, it could burn your kid out mentally, it could burn your kid out emotionally and physically. They could have more injuries when they're young. They could feel like it's their job. And all these factors cause them to quit baseball outright or start to stagnate, not really enjoy it, not get any better as they get older because they don't want to practice as much because it's not as fun. So these are a lot of things to think about as a parent. So I know there's no easy answer to this, but if you ask me just to sum this up, I would say, look, if your kid is not in high school age, don't do weighted ball training. Don't do a velocity program in general. Do a pitching program. Do something focused on mechanics and learning to pitch and developing their off-speed stuff, their mental IQ or their baseball IQ and their mental skills. Do strength training if they want to do it and do a lot of arm care. All those things will improve their velocity greatly. And my kids and my programs, even though we didn't do weighted balls, they gain three to five miles per hour every year. And there's a bunch of them still playing college baseball today. So it's not a zero sum where you have to do velocity training and weighted ball training to get where you want to go. It can be definitely in implemented safely, but there's still a lot we don't know about it. So I think erring on the safe side is a really good way to go about it. Okay. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. And just remember, you might have done weighted ball training for one or two years and you could be perfectly fine. And that's great, but that doesn't mean that weighted ball training might not come back to bite you in the future or that it's going to be safe over a, a five year period or a six or seven year period. Think of longevity and remember there's a lot of stuff that you don't know and the industry still doesn't know about the way some of these velocity training programs are affecting the arm long term. All right. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you here in the next video.